Bonjour à tous. À pile poil la fin du jingle euh, au dernier qui est assis. Donc bienvenue dans cette session euh, dédiée à la sécurisation des comptes de services, des accès administrateurs et de l'Active Directory avec les solutions Silverfor. Alors je me présente rapidement, Marc Schmidt, je suis consultant sécurité et identité et je vais avoir l'honneur d'animer euh, ce témoignage qui est fait par Laurent. Laurent, je te laisse te présenter. Bonjour à tous et à toutes. Donc, je suis Laurent Théry et moi, je suis en charge de la cybersécurité chez un retailer. Voilà. Très bien, Laurent. Alors, avant de rentrer dans le vif du sujet, on va faire un petit, un petit sondage dans la salle. Alors, ceux qui sont à distance, ce sera un petit peu compliqué pour qu'on ait le retour. Et puis, comme on est après le déjeuner, ça fera du bien de, de bouger un peu. Qui dans la salle utilise de l'Active Directory I think everybody's put their hands up. So, uh... Everybody has a company directory who is faced with the safety, security aspect of the active directory. Yes, same number. Who uh, implemented a third party model? Yes, a little bit fewer people, but uh, uh, more than the previous year. So it's something which is uh, becoming usual. One final question, and then I'll let uh, Laurent talk about it. Who's 100% confident in the implementation or in the protection uh, guaranteed by the uh, third party model? Nobody uh, dares. The uh, third party model is extremely uh, 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 versatile but quite complex and is going to be part of the issues which uh, uh, drove this uh, feedback on experience. Laura, can you explain to us, I mean, what led your organization to think and to provide a solution such as Silver Fort is? Thank you very much, Mark. Um, so, I feel equivalent to all of you in the room. I mean, we are an active directory with a few thousand users. We were faced with some problems, as you, all of you were probably, around the hardening of the active directory, because we know that there are always things to be done to uh, 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 cancel some attacks so we're still waiting looking for solutions uh, reassuring us a little bit and uh, solutions we would trust to fight against attacks or at least detect them then we had the second topic which was uh, an important one for me because um, we've got some people who are administrators they've got uh, privilege access Again, okay, so by a sense, I mean, that leads, uh, uh, that adds extra risk because I can do things that I couldn't do with a standard account. And uh, the privilege access accounts are necessary with the right level of uh, access given. So with the uh, security team, we thought, okay, are we going to go towards a bastion, uh, deal with PAM? And if so, what will be uh, the impact of it? So we looked at uh, different uh, PAM solutions that you must have heard uh, elsewhere. We knew that by knowledge or uh, ESA, they are efficient uh, solutions which are sometimes complicated to uh, deploy because they add uh, They, there are some uh, protocol uh, breaks uh, that we've got and um, things that we've got to change in the life of the administrators used to their own tools and things have got to be changed at this level. So we thought about it and it's, uh, it's uh, thanks to that that we uh, came across Silverfoot knowing that we had a third issue to deal with and that third issue I think that we all face it. We've got a history in the society, in the company, which is quite important. The history uh, leads to, I create an account one day, which is the account for a person that's okay because it's attached to this person. So when this person leaves the company, uh, we hear about it and we thought, okay, this is Mr. Smith and is left so we can uh, uh, stop the account and that's when we don't have uh, any other solutions automatic solutions at IMF and we also have non-human uh, non-human accounts and we uh, create them for a test 
testing period of our solution. We implement it and we know that it works the time of the test or when the solution is uh, put into production. Some people ask you to uh, configure it, all this, but nobody asks you saying, okay, oh, the solution we've sold the test and it doesn't work, can we uh, disable it or there are no more subjects in production, can we uh, uh, disable the service account? The second thing that we came across was that as everywhere else, I think that our security policies evolve and uh, at one time we wondered Okay, our service accounts, we should increase the security of passwords, so 25 characters, for instance, and to switch them um, to 25 characters, we I'm going to put them in a specific area where we're going to say all these uh, service accounts are 25 characters long, so I've got to go on all the... Uh, uh, equipment where I've got the passwords, I need to know where the accounts are used and whether they are used or not. So th these were questions that we asked ourselves in the team, how can I find easily uh, service accounts? So we put all the service accounts we were sure of uh, in one place and then there were others uh, still uh, lagging uh, around. So we weren't 100% uh, confident on, w on what the situation was. So we met with the Silverfoot people quite a while ago and they started to uh, uh, give us the solution that they could provide. The uh, in all transparency, uh, we dealt with the part, what could I do to uh, make my uh, privilege account safer? Can we move on to the next slide, please? So, um, we had the first presentation given to us with a demonstration of the solution that helped us to understand what the solution uh, was able to provide. So that was interesting of course, for us to understand what it could uh, uh, do. And we realized that the solution could provide us with answers answers to questions that we didn't have specifically for uh, service accounts and then we thought okay maybe we should uh, probe a little bit further besides the management and uh, um, spam so uh, uh, privilege accounts spam then that means complexity some topics are made a priority more quickly than others so and we thought okay what Silverfoot tells us I mean we've got the ability to do things which are much uh, simpler than with a bastion and we that could help us to uh, go forward and to um, increase the security level with a solution like I decided to protect by introducing MFA by challenging some administration accounts on specific actions like I will like, launch a, a product check with a remote access so I'm going to um, put in an, an MFA, but I could also say for anybody coming to connect on this or that server, which I see as sensitive, I want to add an MFA. There are static uh, real rules that we could see already in the solution. And there's also the possibility that we discovered during the presentation to set rules that would become more dynamic based on the context of risk uh, level calculated by the solution, or thanks to elements that we add, uh, which means that it's not a static element, this IB I want to protect or this person I'm going to give an MFA, we can have dynamic rules uh, set out for a specific criteria. On this particular criterion, I will say, for instance, I block or I challenge or I let go. So these things were quite interesting for us and we had a POC which uh, took place so uh, um, a little while later. So, the first characteristic that we noticed uh, during this uh, 
c'est que c'était, je, je vais le dire avec mes mots, c'était assez balistique. Was quite balistic. I mean, it gave us. Uh, okay, si vous voulez faire un pot, uh, they said, okay, if you have to do DFO, what are the use cases that we've got to uh, to cover? And we we uh, used our use case, and they gave us extra use cases, and uh, we thought, okay, that we didn't think about this solution. So that was quite interesting for us. We looked at a few use cases that were suggested to us. We uh, shared for about half an hour uh, and Frank, who's in the audience here, told us, OK, this is the way we're going to do it. Everything was processed and that is something that makes you feel confident because that's not always the case. And he said, OK, we're going to start with a check on uh, uh, DC to make sure that they've got the physical conditions to support the solution and accept the solution. So we uh, went through L checks, results were analyzed and we had the go ahead. This is the next step. We're going to install it and then we uh, implemented it. And during the whole POC, I mean, the team was quite impressed by the fact that what we wanted to do, we did it uh, as a video with a Frank. Everything was simple. Frank said, you click here, you do this, you do that. We tested it and it worked. We moved on to the next use case. So that was very uh, interesting for us to see that it could work uh, from the word go, which is not always the case with the solutions. So the all the solutions work well, but when you are in a production a customer environment, it doesn't always work as well because there are always uh, cases that we uh, uh, forgot to think about and uh, it blocks the situation, but we had no blocking um, uh, element during the simulation and we could do all our uh, use cases and the silver thoughts uh, suggested use cases also. Use case was protection of the uh, privilege um, Accounts uh, being able to trigger an MFA request or refusing access uh, depending on the uh, person per se. So you put this in place on an unpromised or a legacy environment. So legacy applications, yes, it encompassed this type of issues and uh, we treated issues as varied as the example was quite simple. It's not the right approach to be done in a real world, so to speak, when we wanted to test something. The solution that was uh, uh, suggested uh, by Frank was to say, okay, you want to do this. This is I want to be connected onto a server that we think as sensitive, sensitive. and anybody connected, connecting onto the server uh, should have a challenge via MFA uh, on a Google Authenticator or on the uh, Silverfold application, which is going to be on my cell phone. So the solution that was suggested was very simple, very uh, functional. Connect yourself onto the server. So we would connect ourselves on the RDP with the server. Check in the log, in the Silverfold log. It's a, a user-friendly way of presenting what we would see in the Active Directory log, but in a more simpler way because we see all the information about the authentication. This person connected on that person from this device using this protocol, and he got uh, an authentication that was granted or not by the Active Directory. And based on that, I want to set a, a rule. I click, I set up the rule. From now on, anybody connecting on this uh, destination will have an MFA uh, extra request uh, sent. I click on that, reconnect yourself I'm in RDP, and I get an MFA request from then on. So it's very easy to uh, to, to do that. I mean, it's not great to uh, implement that in a production environment, but uh, we've got to think about what we want to protect and how we're going to do that to have a, a, a proper plan to uh, roll 
call it that after we but for a pock it's a good uh, thing to do same thing with a power shell you open a window you send uh, a power shell with a remote uh, uh, context uh, and it works straight away i'm going to create a challenge on that i'll check on the log and i see my connection i look uh, afterwards i want to block all the requests of this type i block that and from the not i get an mfa on my device and i can only do it on my user which is uh, nonsensical in the uh, production because uh, w uh, uh, that's what we did during the POC to block things quickly and the user uh, to make sure that it worked well. Vocabulaire que tu utilises. Yes, if we hear the word you use, access, protocol, flow, uh, you're clearly making a reference to a firewall. So you should see uh, Silverfort as a firewall of the Active Directory, as an authentication firewall uh, to apply uh, rules, MFA, rejection, uh, depending on the protocol that I want to use. So we agree uh, this is what you were looking for and this is what you did implement. Well, it doesn't seem revolutionary uh, conceptually. We know how to do, but what is specific about Silverfort that you were really interested in? Several things. First, this easiness of implementation. Um, it was as simple as what they had demonstrated. Uh, so we knew it would work in our environment. That was the main thing. And during the whole proof of concept, which lasted, I don't know, maybe a month, uh, we had a now a week to check what we wanted to check in terms of use cases. And we had no fail throughout the use cases that we went through. It worked exactly as planned. Uh, so that was really appreciated. Then the second topic uh, that we found interesting was uh, we were told that we could manage the different service accounts, and this is something that we were interested in uh, because it's a nightmare uh, for people doing admin uh, and particularly from the security side of things because we need to know and we like to know who does what when, and it's not something we always have an overview of. So we looked with Silverfort how we could do that. And when you look at the solution during the time of the test out, the concept, it worked every time in terms of authentication. And it has uh, an intelligence, for want of a better word, that allows it to say it's a service account or equivalent to a service account, meaning a simple service account connects from a device X to a device Y at a given time. Uh, in theory, uh, between device A and B, I can see that there is an authentication at 4 a.m., for example. That's very simple to detect. You don't need to be very smart. But in real life, this is not how it happens. Uh, service accounts that are machine to machine accounts, um, some of them uh, end up uh, knowing the passwords, using the passwords in interactive sessions, which is something we can block now, uh, but we cannot do it with all. And some of those service accounts you are used very widely. You may have a service or department account used from one PC connected to all other PCs in a department. It's not quite the same as from device A to device B or a service account that would go from one device to a number of devices. This is more difficult to detect. And it is all the more difficult to detect if we want to check the password, which we, we may have forgotten, uh, which is in the machines, but that we may not remember. So it's a way to do a mapping. And after a few days, we have this mapping. Now, just like in every mapping based on behavior, we get false positives. So it is for us uh, to react and adjust, saying, I know this account, it is a service account, uh, so it's a proper service account, but this other one is a user, uh, a support person using uh, a service account because it's used on several devices, but it's just a user account, it's not a service account. So these are things that you can start to detect when you do the mapping, but just the starting point, you have the whole list of activated and active service accounts, 
you can quite quickly, I mean, quickly meaning uh, a week, more than a week, whatever. But after a while, I can see that between the list of service accounts which are listed in my Active Directory and those that have requested authentication in the last weeks, uh, last six months, last year, um, these are the proper service accounts. The others are never activated. Maybe I can disable them. So it's a way to clean up. It's a very good thing. You clean up unused accounts. And the second thing we were able to do was to protect service accounts with Silverfort. It's not an MFA. It would be too difficult to have a, 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 an MFA to call for uh, an operator to come in at 4 a.m. Um, so the way to protect those service accounts was to decide whether you would let pass or block. And to do that, you can put filtering rules in place. Uh, I'll give you an example. I want to let tr tr uh, connection go from device A to device B between 3.05 and 3.35 in the morning. That can be a rule. Or I want to let this service account on this range, IP source, IP destination, or single destination or single source, or I can blend times of day, usages, etc. So it gives me a fairly good idea of uh, the activity that I allow and I've restricted uh, the use to uh, the normal utilization. Plus, I have the mapping, which allows me to update passwords uh, because I know uh, all sources are identified, uh, they're identified and available. So it's a plus and, and it's really interesting in terms of protection for us. Now, above and beyond that, we looked at other topics uh, th that uh, we saw emerging uh, during the study uh, period. For example, uh, the detection of weaknesses that you may have on um, the activity. For example, if you have old uh, Intel MV1 protocols, very legacy protocol, it's not always easy to suppress and it's annoying. Um, so with Silver Fort, it's not just doing a switch off. Uh, since you have all authentications, you know how each and every account authenticates. All sources using MTL MV1, uh, it becomes simpler. It's not easy, but it's at least simpler uh, to deal uh, with suppression of a number of protocols which have become obsolete. So mapping, protection of service accounts. So in this protection of service accounts, you can um, protect from the account on the scanner copia with a lot of rounds historically, which can potentially connect anywhere, which means the copier, uh, the service account, uh, can no longer uh, authenticate itself to drop a file. That's quite revolutionary in the way it's dealt with. And if I followed uh, what you were telling previously, you have no implementation of agent uh, on the servers. Uh, yes, and that was really interesting because we have thousands of users with thousands of devices. Every time the editors come and say, uh, this is the solution, this is how it works, you need an agent on the devices, an agent on a device is a nightmare. I don't know what your life is like, but the addition of agents uh, on servers has always been a nightmare. So with the Silver Frost solution, what we found interesting was that I end up with domain control uh, and per group, uh, of controller, I have a knot and I only need one agent per domain controller. The question is, is it not risky to implement an agent? Yes, because we have to put an agent that will send the meta data to the controlling knot in silver fault. Uh, people ask us, is this 
not against the rules <coughs> of the third party zero. Yes, but one specificity about Silverfort is that their software layer is certified by Microsoft uh, in the framework of a technological partnership. So even if you call Google as a support, you're not going to be ejected because you have a Silverfort component. Silverfort is certified uh, by Google, so uh, we just need to implement this component that will send the uh, metadata, because what we do is data firewalling, and this is how the security management is done, and it's the domain controller, depending on what Silverfort tells them, gives or not the green light. This is how it, it, it works, in a nutshell. Uh, uh, we're here to, to really be a witness. So, Laurent, uh, after those tests and proof of concepts on use cases, what are the next steps? Of course, we've engaged into cleaning our network, cancelling all accounts, monitoring uh, a number of, of accounts. Uh, we've identified weaknesses in our active directory, uh, NTLMD1, for example, but also other weaknesses, um, shadow admins, for example, people who are not domain admin, but because of an accumulation of authentication, reach more or less the level of a domain admin. So it's a way uh, for us to identify uh, those people. We can also identify obsolete accounts, obsolete devices, so we can disabled, uh, so it's cleaning up uh, our network. But just like any solutions, we would like to have something that deals with more than our active directory, so we're looking at implementing that on the Azure AD. We also have a number of devices. We don't have, we don't just have Windows, it's not even the majority. We have a number of Linux devices, Red Lot devices, and we're going to have the Authent SSH via the Active Directory with the same uh, capacity as for the Windows devices. So it will be a, a way for us to have a global uh, visibility on all authentication, whether in the AD or the Azure AD, uh, whether uh, on Windows devices or Linux devices, which are in our fleet, plus everything else, PowerShell, Dusted, etc. So, so, so you want to turn Silverfort into the central point of authentication for Active Directory and everything else with the extended visibility, mapping, remediation, etc. Yes, exactly. There's one little thing that I didn't mention which can be interesting to mention. Uh, the fact that, of course, uh, it's a spitting lock that is that, that I can then uh, reconnect on my CM, uh, so I have more qualified alerts or alarms on a number of subjects. That's for the integration part. This is also something that we're looking at. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for this uh, very detailed account of your journey with Silver Fort. Do we have questions? We have a few minutes, and if not, you can come and talk to us after the session. It's not easy uh, to sum up a, a wide solution like Silver Fort uh, within 30 minutes. Thank you for your feedback. First question, uh, is it improvised or incest solution? Uh, it needs to drink, so I will give you an answer. It's on-premise solution, it's hybrid, but the components VM are in-premise, one not, two, two components, the not and then the admin console, which will interpret everything that is sent back from the not where the rules are decided. And I say hybrid because, of course, there's discussion uh, with the cloud for push services, MFA, but it could work without it, so it's on-premise. Uh, and we can even have it in segregated networks. The, the, the question was, from a data point of view, you generate log, uh, so apart from connected to a SOC or CM, where are the logs stored? In the admin none, admin not, so there's a VM uh, which sites depend on the Active Directory, 
so it's stored on this VM on premise. Uh, you can host it on Azure if you want, but functionally speaking, everything is on-premise. And second point, compatibility with uh, GSMA. Uh, I look at Silverfort, compatible, yes, Franck? Yes, 4.9. So GSMA are supported by the Silverfort solution. Very good question. Very good question in terms of support. Anything else?